Um, our next performer is our dear Matt Talbot, who has this fresh from California with his wry sense of humor. <laughs> Is it possible for it to be higher? <laughs> it could have made that more complicated if they tried. Technical difficulties. What? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. This is the greatest way to start this particular set, I think. Yeah, <laughs> Portland, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. I've never... I've. I've opened for Bao at Mayorana, you know, I've, they gave me 30 minutes at Elias Sahavas, but I've never done Portland, and I'm very excited to be here. And I appreciate the fact that you have no restrictions on this, because when I did Myrtle Beach last year, as they do every year, they say it's for the young adults. Now I'm 36, so I don't know if that still counts as a young adult. I think I hurt my knee on the way up, walking up the stairs. I can tell because it's singing, storms are coming, you know. And uh, I'm still in concussion protocol from a volleyball game back in Mayorana, so I'm not sure. I asked them, I said, am I still a young adult? I'm 36 years old. And they said, if your mom still looks at you like a little kid, you're still a young adult. So I'm like, when I'm like 65 years old, I guess I'll still be a young adult at that point, you know? I don't, I'm not sure, but I figure if they don't like me, they'll just, you know, at, May, at, at Myrtle Beach, at the meeting place, I'll just get up and, you know, broom me off the stage as they do. I guess being the center would probably be a rake or, you know, or something like that. But um, so now that I'm here, uh, I have no jokes. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. No, I'm just joking. I've been doing this since 2007. And, um, and it's surprisingly difficult to keep writing jokes solely about the Baba community and Meher Baba for 11 years. I mean, what's the deal with doll only goes so far. And... Um, and despite being in everything and everyone, Baba hasn't actually done all that much since 1969. There's not a lot of fresh material coming out of Merzod, you know? I mean, it seems to me that if someone was like, I'm going to do jokes just about Jimi Hendrix, and I'm going to do jokes about Jimi Hendrix fan, doing 11 years worth of material, I think that's pretty solid, pulling that off, you know? So, uh, but I, I, do have, I do have some stuff, but it could be helpful if maybe you yelled out some audience suggestions. Now, I know what your first suggestion is going to be, Peter, how to deal with rogue water lines in the, uh, you know, at Maribod, you know, something spraying. Well, you know, I get that. I did some material on that back in 2012, so I don't need that particular suggestion right now, but is there any other thoughts on things that I could write maybe for Portland 2019? Any, any thoughts on... Uh, what? I hear... That doesn't sound that funny, to be honest with you. It doesn't... I mean, it sounds pretty, uh, you know, I'm not sure that Narin Maharaj was out there doing bits, you know, I don't know. You know I don't know if Azra Babajan had like a chunk on material for 30 minutes or something. But. I get one from your very mouth. Uh, when, you asked, uh, when you asked who's Wayne Myers and I said, uh, salt and pepper, you said, doesn't help at all. Yeah, that doesn't narrow it down. That doesn't narrow it down. What was it like to grow up in a Baba family? Well, there we go. There we go. That's actually on my best of DVD. I guess you aren't the super fan I took you for. That's fine. But that's okay. You know, but we're here to have fun. I'm going to work some new material that I've been working on. I have some old classics from slightly earlier this year that will, will fit in. So I think it'll be fun. But um, I don't know if you're like me, but... Uh, you may live a life filled with insecurities. And so when people come over to your house, maybe lawyers or maybe not lawyers, but in your profession, people come over to your house, maybe you hide all the Baba stuff. Because in your real life, they think you're a Jew. Maybe that's exactly the situation for you. I don't know. Maybe that's only my life. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. But 
uh, and Elizabeth, other people have been getting kind of mad at me. They've been saying, why are you hiding? I take all the photos of Baba off the wall or I move them here or there. And people say, just live your life. Just, you know, be open to this. And so a few months ago, I had um, some friends come over and they are lawyers, so I like to get business from them, so I let them think I'm a Jew. And uh, people like to refer work to Jewish lawyers. They don't know a lot about Baba lawyers. That's not as well known, but Jewish lawyers is an old trope. And so I took down all the over-representations of Baba. There's some other stuff that maybe you would see a Will David painting and you would say, that's a Baba thing, but the average person wouldn't know, right? And we're having fun, and there's a small painting, photo, really, of Baba and Mary. It's about this big, right? And, um, and, and I had forgotten, because it's so small, I had forgotten to take it down. It's just sitting on a desk. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and the, uh, and so my friend, who's extremely Christian, sees it. And he calls me over. He said, who, Matt, who is this? Right? And in my head, I'm thinking, just say Baba, just say Baba, just say Baba, just say Baba, just say Baba. And uh, living this life of insecurity that I do, I say, oh, it's an old friend. So I don't say, I don't say Baba. I don't say anything about that. I just say, oh, it's just an old friend. And he's looking at it. And he's staring at it. And he says, he says, he looks at it. He says, this is eye-catching or something. And I'm thinking, like, this is obviously Baba just toying with me and in my brain i'm thinking just say baba just say just say it and it's and the and it's the clock is going in my brain because he's not going to look at this forever but he looked at it for like 20 of the longest seconds of my life he was just staring and it was like one two they weren't like well they were like it wasn't like one two three. this was like it was like sort of a philip glass piece this was like one one and a half like, I had literally every moment in the world to say something while this guy found the smallest photo that you could ever find of Baba with Mara, called me over, asked me who it was, and actively said, this is such an interesting photo. And of course, I said nothing, right? And then we moved on with our, our night, and we had a great night, and they sent me cases or whatever, right? So... Because, right, you can't support a family off of, off of the love of Baba, right? You need money. It's the nature of capitalism. So, um, so then, um, this is mostly a Marxist theory class I think this is going to turn into, right? You know, sort of Engels and Marx. No, but anyways, they were not the best comedy duo, Engels and Marx. Sort of an Abbott and Costello thing. I'm just riffing at this point. But, um, but so... Uh, so at that time, I was like, you know what? That's Bob is saying, you need to stop living this life of insecurity. People, they don't care. They're going to see it, right? And then it's an opportunity. So what actually happened while well, this is all going on is Elizabeth bought a seven-foot-tall painting of Baba. I'm not joking. We had to get it, like, shipped from Myrtle Beach. It's from this artist named Anna Craddock, Anna von Hoffman or something. And it's just a, phys it's just, it's just a physical portrait of Baba that's not true to size, right? Because he was about 5'7 or so, I think 5'8, something like that. You know, maybe, I'm about 5'10, so he's he, he coming about here, I guess. I don't know. Um, we don't have, like, a life-size cardboard cutout of Meher Baba, you know? Although we should. We should have life-size. That's like, we do it these Sahavas, we do. I haven't been back since, like, the aughts, but... So, once she, we put this on the wall, I was like, it's over. Because I can't take this thing down and, like, just turn it around. And Why is there a seven-foot-tall painting facing the wall in your house? Like, no one would be like, no be like oh, I'm not going to look at that thing and ask any questions about it. Right? I'm just, oh, yeah, seven-foot-tall painting facing the wrong way. It makes total sense. Total sense. Just going to walk past that one. So, so, I have a lawyer friend over. And this is the first time that someone has come to my house and I haven't taken the things off the wall because it, at this point it doesn't matter. The gig's up, right? Yeah. And when we were growing up, to get to your point, Dan, when we were growing up, we'd have friends over. I don't know, I've done bits on this before. We'd have friends over and it would be awkward because they'd be like, why is there, like, you know, Yanni on your wall? Like, why is Joseph Stalin? Like, I don't understand, you know? And then they'd be like, and then they'd go back to their parents and they'd be like, yeah, so I'm never going to that home ever again. You know, so like, it was an awkward slumber party. So, and so... Now the, like, cycle of violence continues for my daughter, right? Because now she's going to have friends over, and they're going to be like, why is there a seven-foot-tall painting of, like, some guy with a mustache? And I'm like, he's just a guy from Portland. It's just the way it is, you know? People in Portland, they just have mustaches and tattoos. That's just what they do. Um, and so... So we come in, they come, and he's got his family, he's coming. Uh, that doesn't mean you in specific, Dan. That doesn't mean you in specific, all right? <laughs> After this, I'm going to get beaten up by a guy holding a two-and-a-half-year-old kid right here. I can see that. He's very mean. He's very, 
He's very mean. Yeah, the kid's going to beat me up. He's a very vicious child. I can see that. Uh, he didn't have his nap time, so he's grumpy. I can see what's going on there. Um, so they come in, and this is the this is the first time someone's been over my house, lawyer. I haven't taken anything off the wall, and I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. So I'm going to say what I'm going to do. And they walk in, and they see the seven foot tall painting of Baba, and they say, "Oh, who is that?" Right? Because of course. Yeah. And uh, and they go, "Okay, that's Meher Baba. That's an Indian spiritual master." That Elizabeth and I follow, and they're like, "Oh, okay." And there are no follow up questions. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, okay, cool. "Yeah." And then we sit down and chat for like two hours right next to the painting. Like, we, at one point, his son was like running a stroller into the painting. I was like, "Could he just not like, oh yeah, 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 yeah." No follow up questions. No nothing. No anything. No like. Okay, all right. So either A, he immediately was just like, this is the weirdest man ever, and I'm in no way going to ask anything because I don't want to know. Or B, there's such a lack of intellectual curiosity amongst the vast majority of people in the world that they're so focused on themselves that it doesn't matter to them. And me living my life of insecurity is me projecting my own insecurities onto other people and my own childhood insecurities of I'm a weirdo onto people who just don't care, right? <laughs> I really hope I'm videoing this. I think. Can you check to see that it says record? Because I've never done that bit before. Robbie, can you check? I've never done that bit before, and I want. You can just stand up. Does it say the record thing? You can. <laughs> Did I record that? Yes. All right, sweet. I'm gonna watch that later and do it for December. And it was in Myrtle Beach in December. John Shed will be there. He'll get it. He'll get it. So. I can hack all of your phones, right? Because everyone here, I can get into all of your doors, whatever, because everyone here, everyone here has one of three codes on your phone, okay? 1894, I don't even know if I need this thing, I'm so loud, it's probably annoying people. 1969 or 2222, which spells Baba on the phone, right? If you just, you wanna plug in 2222. So all I need is your mother's maiden name, and I could get, I need the high school that you went to, you know, like the mascot. I could hack all of your phones. I don't know if you guys are, anyone a big Seinfeld fan over here? Anyone like Seinfeld? There's a whole episode where George gets into a thing in his relation with his girlfriend because he won't give up the secret passcode to his bank account, right? And she feels that that's a step of trust showing that they can get access and that she won't do anything. And he refuses to give it. But if I was dating any one of you, I would have no problem accessing any of your stuff. Now, I'd have a problem with my wife who'd be angry that I'm dating any one of you. <laughs> Except for Jom Shed, because she'd be fine with that. But, <laughs> but, so recently, a friend of mine, actually two years ago, a friend of mine who's a pastor moved his family from Alabama to a church near my house where I grew up in California, Moraga, California. Some of you probably know where this is. Most of you don't care, and that's fine. The, the geography of Contra Costa County in California is probably low on your list of things. Very low on your list, and that's fine. I don't care that much about Clackamas County. So these things even out. I'm sorry. I know, know your, know your audience, right? You know, don't show up and be like, you're all the worst. But it's okay, because if you end it with J-Baba, it's totally fine. You can be like, you're ugly, J-Baba. That's totally fine. You have to have like a J-Baba sandwich. Like, J-Baba, you're the worst, J-Baba. And they're like, Matt's such a nice guy. He's just such a great guy. It's like, bless your heart in the South with all due respect. You know? But anyways, I'm working on new material. But anyways, um, so... Uh, my friend, he moves his family out, and he doesn't know anybody. So I say, when you give a sermon, I will go to your church, and I will support you. I will sit there, and you will see my face, and it may or may not help you. But I will support you, right? Now, I've never been to a church before. I know what a church is like. I grew up in a weird cult, right? So I don't know what a church is like. I'm like, I'm going to go to this church, and it's going to make me feel even weirder, because this is what, like, America, this is, like, what real Americans do, right? America. America. And I go there. And I swear it made me feel so normal. It was like exactly what we do, right? Because what do they do? They sing songs, right? Okay. They, uh, someone talks. They give talks. There's a sermon. Someone gives talks. Peter Booth has given a number of sermons, <laughs> quote unquote, this time, right? Mostly about John Shedd's grandfather. Almost exclusively about Jimmy Mystery, right? And then, and, and they have fun. We sing songs. We give talks. But let me tell you something. Our chai is a lot better. Okay, they're chai. Go to the church. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely, they're chai. Very mediocre, watery, just not good. And I mean that in the most nice way, you know, to Christians. J Baba, J Baba. I know. 
I, I have a whole bit I was going to work in about how Baba wasn't like, you know, a treasonous uh, against the state thing. And I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't do like anti Jesus Christ stuff, but I can do it and just end with J Baba, right? <laughs> you know? So, um, and my friend actually got mad at me because I was going there and I was handing out business cards, you know? <laughs> And he was like, no, you can't go to church and hand out business cards. And I was like, if I can't go to a church I don't belong to, as part of a religion I don't follow, I hand out my cards, where can I hand them out? <laughs> but the thing is, if, you've, if you're interested in Christianity, which is great, right? Baba says Jesus was an avatar. There are many paths of the heart of the Lord, right? And you've read the Bible. you read the Bible. Then you know that large chunks of it are letters from this guy named Paul, right? Now... As you learn a little bit more about Paul, you learn some interesting things. He never actually technically met Jesus while Jesus was alive, although he claims to have had visions right on the road to Damascus. And he went and met with the disciples after Jesus died and spent about three weeks with them, okay? And then went off and started all these churches in like Antioch and stuff. And so when I think of people who never met Jesus people who hung out with the disciples. I was that's most of you, right? <laughs> right, you never met Baba, but in the 70s, you went there. I mean, we heard all about that today, right? And some people spend three weeks, some people spend 32 years or whatever, right? Some people never met Baba and think that they saw him on the road to Damascus, I guess, or maybe an MG road, I don't know. But um, what I realized is that there are billions of people around the world that base their life off of the letters of this guy, Paul. And I'm concerned that in like a thousand years, there'll be billions of people that base their life off of the Facebook of Will David. <laughs> that they're going to see this and be like, this guy, Will David. Now, he never met Baba, but he went to India, the very location where Baba was, and he met the Mondali, the very people who are with Baba. So this guy, Will David is Paul. Paul and Will David, I've never seen them in the same room. Can I say that? Can I put that two and two together? Can I put... Yeah, j Baba, j Baba, j Baba. They'll be like, who is this Bernie guy? I don't know anything about him, but it sounded very important. Um, but the thing is, I don't trust you guys on Facebook. Can I tell you that? This might not be the best thing again to say. This might be the Clackamas County thing, but I do not trust you guys on Facebook. I don't trust you guys on whether vaccines cause autism. I don't trust you on whether 9-11 was an inside job, and I really don't trust you on whether vaccines cause 9-11. Okay? I really don't do that. But the thing about being a Baba lover and being all this is that it used to be you would go and, and Baba would say things. People would meet with Baba and not say things, but he would do the gestures as Peter said. He would do all this and then he was gone, right? So then people would go to talk to the Mondali and the Mondali would give talks and they would say, this is what it was like to be with Baba and be like, oh, that's great. And then all the Mondali are gone. So now we're listening to people that are like, this is what the Mondali were like. So I don't know if in like 20 years, I'm going to be up here on the stage being like, I was there back in Portland 18, and Peter Booth was giving some great talks about the Mondali talking about Baba. Like, we're getting really, I don't know if in like 2058, my daughter's going to be like, I heard my dad say a lot of things about Peter Booth, who said a lot of things about the Mondali, who said a lot of things about Meher Baba. Like, we're getting like this tenuous relationship at a point. Like, I don't know what it's going to be, but... But we're having fun. Um, uh, and um, so there are, there are a lot of rules if you go to the center, right? Have you been, anyone, raise your hands if you've been to the center in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, I see that. A lot of people have been to the center in Myrtle Beach. Please don't beat me up afterwards, Dan. A lot of people have been to the center in Myrtle Beach. It's a, it's a great thing. And, um, and if you go, they give you the rule sheet, right? And some of the rules were written by Bob, and some were, weren't, and they're a little more practical, maybe, right? Like the shoes thing, I don't think it was written by Bob. Maybe it was, I have no idea. But for the sake of the joke, we'll say it wasn't. Um, but there's one rule that I've never, ever at any point understood, and it's the fact that we can't do the I Ching, right? <laughs> now, right, have you seen that? It says you can't do the I Ching on the center. Now, before we keep going, let's make all the jokes. You've heard it before thousands of times. The I Ching is just Apple's version of the Ching. We get that, okay? <laughs> Heard the joke, get it out of the system, I totally understand. But I don't even understand what the I Ching is. I don't even know if I'm doing the I Ching right now. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it. How do you, is it a verb? It's the I Ching? I don't even know. By the way, in the bit, you guys have to get there later because I'm about to do the bit about that. That's fine. Anyways, um, I don't even know what I'm saying. Am I doing the, am I I Chinging when you do it? Or are you I Chinging? I Changed? I will have had I Chinged. I don't understand even how to conjugate the I Ching. I don't even understand that. So, 
Uh, I mean, am I doing it right now? Am I doing? The, I could be doing the I Ching right now. I have no idea. Am I doing? Am I doing it? No. What? I don't even know what the I Ching is. It's a book. Is it a book or an oracle? Because those are two different things. A book can't be an oracle. Well, it does. You put your finger in the page. And okay. No, an oracle is like a person, like an old Greek woman. An oracle is like a 2,000-year-old Greek woman. She comes with the book. Okay, so we've gotten into slavery at this point. That's fine. But what always surprised me was that they still have this indentured servitude. Totally different, totally different. What surprised me is they have this, they have this law, they have this thing at the center, no open-toed shoes, no this, no that, flashlights in the dark, and no I Ching. And that no, people are not claiming to this, no one has ever had any peer pressure. No one's ever come to me and like, hey, let's, uh, let's talk behind the lagoon cabin and do some I Ching. You want to do that? You want to do the I Ching behind the lagoon cabin? Never happened. Hey, you've been a great audience. <laughs> Jay Baba, Portland, you're the best. I have a ton.